Charter MP is about Great to join us. There she is. So good morning, I'll call this uh, regular meeting of Council of the Municipality of Jasper to order for August 3rd. Just a reminder for those um, who are listening in, the uh, mobile vaccination clinic will be in town today from 10.30 to uh, six o'clock across from the Crimson. So we'll continue to share that message with everyone as you can. Councillors, you have today's proposed agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or other changes to be made to the agenda? Hearing none, might I have a motion please to approve the agenda as presented? Thank you, Councillor keller -Empey. All in favor? There are none opposed, that's carried. The minutes of the regular meeting of July 20th, 2021 have been circulated. Are there any errors, omissions or corrections required to be made to those minutes? If there are none, may I have a motion please to approve the minutes of July 20th, 2021 as presented. Councillor Demota, thank you. All in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. We have no presentations slated. Mr. Greathead, I presume that remains the case. Good morning, Mr. Your Worship. Uh, there are no delegations, no presentations. Thank you for that. Is there any business arising from previous minutes? I see nothing. Uh, agenda item six, department reports. There is nothing scheduled. And unless I hear otherwise, I will presume that is the case. Which takes us to agenda number item number seven, request for decision 7.1, the West Yellowhead Regional Waste Management Authority Governance and Administration Plan. Um, there is an attachment, uh, Mr. Greathead. Um, we reviewed this a week ago at Committee of the Whole. Although we did that in the absence of um, the, the two consultants, and I see Mr. Kreiner is here today. So uh, if either of you wish to speak to the matter first, um, I invite you to do so. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, good morning, uh, Council. Um, we're bringing this back again um, as part of the um, West Yellowhead Regional Waste Management Authority governance model. Um, during the discussion last week, um, there was just a little bit of confusion. So um, before I guess we get into the um, report and, and recommendations and and we do have uh, Mr. Craner available uh, for, for any um, further information that may be required of council. But I'd um, ask uh, Ms. Nadon um, if she would like to um, uh, speak to the uh, revised uh, motion um, from admin, please. Thank you, Mr. Greathead. Good morning, Mayor and Council, Mr. Kreiner. Um, I just want to speak to how we presented the report and uh, what happened at the last committee of the whole meeting. So you will see that the first two recommendations are exactly as Council passed them. So committee recommend Council, and then whatever came after that is exactly what you see under the recommendations, because uh, to follow that that due process um, that is council recommending to itself. So we didn't want to modify that. But then when reviewing the meeting recording and trying to draft minutes for that meeting, we realized that the condition for the motion would be better served if it was part of, uh, of one motion. Um, so administration can, can deliver on council's direction more appropriately, but um, so you do, I think you do have the opportunity today when you pass a motion and vote on the motion to, to modify it, but we didn't want to preempt anything or, or propose that without giving you the wording that you actually voted on last week. So it's there as a suggestion under options, and there's an alternative wording proposed by administration, and we think that's likely the motion that that would have come forward in a in a format that makes it easier to follow, I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm missing my words this morning. It's after the long weekend, it's too early. Um, 
Well, yeah, anyway, so that's what we're proposing and that's what you're seeing in the report. And of course, council may choose to vote on whatever you think is appropriate, but from an administrative standpoint, we tell, give you that information to help you navigate how you might go forward with this item. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Don. Anything further from either uh, Mr. Kreiner or council with respect to the matter? Councillor Deboda. Well, you know, I really appreciated going through the, the document and uh, just, you know, getting a greater scope on, you know, when you're sitting on a council and, and you get reports back from, from the authority mm -hmm. or about the authority, uh, you know, you kind of have a, a cursory or a surface understanding of it. So this report really uh, helped me at least in, in getting a, a, a more in-depth understanding of the process and, and the recommendations coming forward. Um, you know, like many and, and how it was uh, observed in the document, uh, my, I think my only ongoing concern would be um, accountability of, of management and, you know, performance evaluations. And, uh, you know, I'm just kind of hoping that that would be part of the business plan and how that would, uh, you know, roll out as, as uh, the transition goes forward, if, if that's the, the direction it's going to go. And, uh, you know, I, I think that it, it's been, uh, it's well thought out. And, um, you know, again, with the revolving um, membership, I, I find that it, it will, it could be a struggle to, to kind of maintain an even keel when it comes to evaluations and, and accountability. So um, I, I don't know if I need any more insight there, but uh, it looks like it's being addressed. And I'm just wondering if that's gonna be part of the business plan going forward when it's presented. Does that make sense? Thank you, uh, Councillor Devota. Uh, Mr. Kreiner, I, I saw you nodding. Um, did, did you wish to, to further that or is the nod sufficient? Yeah, just to say that yes, uh, performance management of the manager by the commission board would be an important element of the business plan. Thank you. Uh, anything else from councillors? I will say that I, I appreciate um, the work that administration did to, uh, I think, tidy up the wording of the motion. Um, I, I am happy with what um, is presented in today's report with proposed revised motion wording, which is not identical to the recommendation from committee to council, but, but I think better reflects what the intent um, would be. I do have a question for Mr. Kreiner arising from all of that. Uh, does an approval in principle subject to those two conditions um, create a difficulty at your end? Uh, no, in that the bylaws will be reflective of any feedback we can get on the specifics and we'll move forward knowing that people support the principle but would like some of the details revised before it comes back to them as a commission bylaws. So I, I'm comfortable with that. Thank you for that. Anything else from councillors? Councillor Butler. Thanks very much and thank you to administration for the improved wording and Mr. Kreiner, your team, thank you very much for your work on this. I only have one question. Sometimes in scenarios like this where municipalities work together to provide infrastructure or infrastructure services like this, one model that is used sometimes is a corporate model. So a um, collectively owned corporation. And uh, for example, that is the case with the company we've contracted to um, manage our wastewater treatment plant, it is owned by a number of municipalities, albeit we are not one of them. In that case, we only have a service contract. And I wonder if that model was considered here. Um, and if so, why the model of a commission as opposed to a corporate model was chosen? Uh, I can speak to that, Mr. Mayor. and members of Jasper Municipal Council, the, uh, it was definitely considered as one of the options. It's the commission structure isn't that different from a corporate structure, except uh, perhaps in one or two elements. One is the 
corporate structure typically expects a profit-making ma mandate for the enterprise. And as such, uh, there's dividends paid back to the owner municipalities. That's not a realistic scenario with the mandate that's proposed for this commission being to manage solid waste from the transfer station to final disposal or return, shall we say. So that was probably the single biggest reason that that wasn't the preferred option. Good. Thank you very much. I appreciate that answer. Thank you, Councillor Butler and Mr. Kreiner. Anything else um, from councillors? If not, I would invite a motion from council, a councillor. Councillor Butler. Thanks very much. I'm happy to make the motion um, as uh, with the proposed revisions from administration. Um, would you like me to read the motion? Uh, you're welcome to, or, or I will. I, I think we should be clear because it has, somebody has taken right. the time to be clear. Um, so I move that council support in principle, the WYR WMA governance and administrative plan as presented with the following conditions. First, creating an annual requirement that the commission's business plan be formally endorsed by council members. Second, removing or reducing the requirement for commission members to be appointed for a four year term. Thank you for that, Councillor Butler. Um, in the absence of any hands to speak, to the motion, I will assume you're ready for the question and I'll call the question. All in favor? There are not opposed, that is carried. So on behalf of uh, council, Mr. Kreiner, thank you very much uh, for the work of, of yourself and, uh, and Mr. Moore throughout this, a, a very thorough report, uh, very much appreciated. Still work for you to get done now to, to get uh, the bylaws drafted for approval by um, the existing board, but we look forward to perhaps dealing with that uh, sometime in the fall. Thank you. Just wanted to say thank you uh, also, and it's nice to see you again, Mr. Kreiner, especially in this mix. Sounds good. All right, thank you for that. Uh, agenda item 7.2 is the um, QP Local 1458 Collective Agreement discussion. And I saw Ms. Daniel on my screen, there she is. Um, I take it, Ms. Daniel, that you are speaking to this matter. So please proceed when you're ready. Uh, good morning, Your Worship, councillors. Uh, can you hear me? Sorry, I'm on headphones. So I just wanna make sure. Okay, Mr. Greathead gave me a thumbs up. Uh, so before you this morning is the request to approve the proposed changes to our current collective agreement between the municipality of Jasper and QP Local 1458. On July 20th, we reached a tentative agreement with the union, and this tentative agreement was ratified by the union members last week. All employees of the municipality of Jasper, with the exception of 21 employees in manager or director roles, are represented by this union. Uh, detailed information about the changes is in the RFD, but highlights of the proposed agreement include wage increases this year and for the subsequent two years at 0%, 1.25%, and 2.5%. Uh, there's an increase to vacation time for new employees and less time to earn more vacation for more senior employees, a rewrite of our sick leave article and a decrease in yearly sick days. Uh, but the addition of an in-house short-term disability plan that covers all employees once they've uh, completed their probationary period. Uh, there's also an addition of two personal days in our new sick leave policy. And uh, you'll also note the removal of shift and weekend premium articles. It is anticipated that the benefits and salary levels proposed will enable the municipality to continue to attract and retain staff. The salaries and compensation package proposed for the 2021, or sorry, proposed for 2021 can be accommodated within the budget allocations approved already in that 2021 budget. And myself, and I believe Gordon Hutton is here as well, um, can answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Ms. Daniels. Questions from councillors?
Councillor Butler. Not a question, um, just a couple of comments. So first of all, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Daniels, and the rest of the negotiating team for the job well done. Also, I'd like to extend my thanks to the union and its representatives for what I understand to have been a um, overall good working relationship and I think a good outcome for the community. It's worth pointing out that the average increase of 1.25% per year over three years is on the high end of what we're seeing in Alberta for municipal agreements over the past year or so. However, I think that is well balanced out um, by the changes that have been made um, within the uh, agreement that are a little harder for community members to see. There tends always to be a focus on, well, what is the wage increase? Uh, but the efficiencies that you just referred to, Ms. Daniel, around um, vacation pay um, and other benefits to the organization are real and um, accountable. So I appreciate that very much. I also would like to say that I'm satisfied with what may seem like a little bit um, relatively higher agreement in this sense that uh, I think also I'd like to point out that through the really difficult past year and a half, two years, um, that uh, members of the organization and the union representation in particular have been very work um, cooperative and helpful in helping the organization um, as it struggled through um, budget constraints and uh, opening and closing of uh, facilities. And I think given the great difficulties we've dealt with over the past couple of years, um, it has gone as well as anybody could have hoped and that is in part due to a real open, um, adaptable and positive working relationship uh, on part of the union and its members. So I'd just like to thank everyone for that and acknowledge that all of that is factored into this a tentative agreement. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler. Uh, Councillor Juneau. Thank you, Your Worship, Mr. Mayor, and thank you to uh, Ms. Daniel for presenting this report. And also, I want to congratulate all parties for achieving uh, this at uh, a very, what I consider, very timely position. We have just, uh, we're going post COVID. And uh, there's a lot of uh, challenges ahead as we reopen, re redo our facilities. And it's important that we have our uh, staff in a good position, satisfied and good morale. And I think that it speaks well for the health of our municipality. And I look forward to a good working relationship from here on in. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Trudeau. Any other questions or comments? Ms. Daniel, I, I have one uh, at its more process. Um, our policy and the administrative procedures leave um, the final approval of the collective agreement in the hands of council, uh, but council is not part of the negotiating team. And I, I too stand my congratulations to the negotiating teams on both sides, that is the, the union side and, and management. Um, obviously you've worked very collaboratively to come up with uh, this tentative agreement. The procedural question is, what would happen if council for any reason was not to approve um, the agreement? I, I take it if there is any, any change at all that might be suggested by council, uh, the tentative agreement would simply fall and everything would go back to the negotiating table. Is that, is that an accurate assessment? That's correct, yes. Thank you for that. And I, I'm not suggesting um, that I want to macro, micromanage the, the, the process, um, but just to make it clear to, to all that the negotiations have occurred um, in a spirit of collaboration with two groups Council, um, by virtue of its position, gets to approve, but hasn't negotiated this, and it it puts us in a in an interesting position where um, respecting that it is a collective agreement um, produced um, 
and ratified by a membership, I think is substantially important that the members of, of our unionized staff um, have taken this, I take it to a vote of the membership where it has been endorsed, uh, which is a, I suggest a, a very positive sign for all of us. And it would be, um, I think ill-advised for council to, to attempt any sort of rejigging at this point, but I really do respect the, the work that's gone into it to this point. From, from your side and from, of course, uh, our QP local 1458. Thank you. That is all that I have, uh, Councillor DeMota. No, I have nothing further to add. And, uh, you know, the three of you spoke so eloquently and, and I, I couldn't use better words. So, and I am very, very grateful that we are where we're at through the process and, and congratulations to, to everybody in, involved. Uh, like the mayor said, you know, um, there's a, there was a lot of hard work there and uh, the credit goes to the people. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I, I do want to recognize, of course, it is a collective agreement and we have uh, agreed in the past that that is how we will treat our, our unionized staff, that is through the collective approach. Um, so I, while I appreciate that um, there might be um, differences of opinion within the unionized staff as to the outcomes and not everybody is treated exactly the same. It is um, a collective agreement and ratified by the union, which is, I think, extremely significant. Might I call upon a councillor to make a motion? Councillor keller -Rempe. Thank you, Mayor Ireland, and I'd like to extend my congratulations to Ms. Daniels, Mr. Hutton, and all the negotiation team. This is awesome, and I'm very happy to make the motion that Council approve the Memorandum of Agreement between QP Local 1458 and the Municipality of Jasper Negotiating Committee agreed to on July 20th, 21. Thank you, uh, Councillor keller Is there any debate on the motion? If not, I will call the question. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. So again, uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Daniel. Pass that on to all of the negotiating team on both sides. Um, very much appreciated by, by council to, to have this okay, matter great. concluded. Thank you, us as well. And I'll pass that on to both teams today. Thank you for that. That takes us to agenda item 7.3, COVID relief reserve, um, community childcare strategy. And, oh, I see Mrs. Waxer now has joined us. I thought we might be returning to Ms. Daniel. Good morning, Mrs. Waxer. Good morning. Did you wish to, to speak to the report further? Yeah, just I'll just briefly say that um, one of the learnings that has emerged from the pandemic is the understanding of the important role that childcare plays um, in our tour uh, in the economic growth and recovery in our tourism based economy, our community based commu tourism based community, our communities essential services, tourism operators and businesses directly rely on the availability of quality and affordable ch uh, childcare. The, in fact, the Economic Recovery Task Force uh, highlighted the importance of childcare um, in their COVID recovery uh, strategy. It as was discussed at committee last week, a childcare strategy for our, our community is important. I think everyone is in agreement with that. And, uh, I think I noted last time the, the correlation between the cost of one year of daycare in our community to the cost of one year of university tuition and uh, residence. Um, I, so it is a critical time in, uh, in child care. And I think it's very uh, important that we have a look at the strategy and to, uh, have a really solid understanding of what our um, the needs in our community are vis-a-vis -vis child care so that we can um, potentially move forward if, if and when the uh, 
provincial government uh, uh, joins the, uh, the federal child care strategy. Um, and I'm, that's, that's all I had to say for today. Thank you for that, Mrs. Waxer. Um, any questions from counselors with respect to the report? Councillor Keller empty. Thank you, uh, Mayor Ireland. Uh, through you to Mrs. Waxer. I'm curious on the rollout of um, how a consultant will engage with the community on this and the business community. Um, will that be part of the process as we move forward uh, for this child strategy, Mrs. Waxer? Um, I apologize. I your uh, voice became muffled for me as so I didn't hear clearly what you said. Okay, sorry, Ms. Swaxer. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'm curious about the process um, working with the consultant. Will that uh, include a community engagement, a business engagement of what uh, the public may feel we need for um, daycare? I don't believe that we have worked out the strategy yet, as of yet, but of, of, I think, of course, those are critical elements. Um, and I think that's the whole point is developing an understanding from all, all perspectives as to what is required and what is affordable and what is, um, yeah, I think there's many pieces, there's many pieces to it and it's critical that we have the well-rounded perspective. Thank you, Ms. Swexer. Thank you, Councillor Keller. Uh, Councillor Butler. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Ireland, and through you to Ms. Swexer and Ms. Waxer. Thank you very much for your comments and for the report. I just wanted you to clarify one comment you made. I, I didn't quite follow, and I apologize. Uh, the comment you made with respect to uh, um, you made a comparison with a year, cost of a year of university. I, I just missed what what you were saying there. I'm sorry. Could you clarify that? Absolutely. Just uh, that uh, when you look at the cost of university tuition and sending a child away, it it, it is somewhat equivalent to the cost of of um, a monthly the monthly cost of sending your child to daycare, and that while we encourage families to save for the that time when they go away to university, I think many young families are taken aback by the enormous cost of childcare when they have an infant. All right, thank you. That clarifies it for me, I appreciate it. Mrs. Waxer, I, I wonder whether um, you can advise if you're aware of any changes um, either at the level of this province or other provinces with respect to um, adopting the national um, early learning and child care plan uh, that was rolled out recently. Uh, the, the second bullet point of the recommendation is that we um, undertake advocacy in that regard, but things are changing somewhat rapidly and I'm just wondering whether you have any information um, to present by way of update to what we heard a week ago. I know that uh, since I spoke to you last week, uh, um, I think the day that we're speaking, the province of Prince Edward Island was signing on and subsequent to that, the province of Newfoundland and Labrador also signed on um, along with Yukon, British Columbia and New Brunswick. So to date, um, we have not heard very much of, from the province as to their uh, intent with this strategy. And I know that uh, in reading the information on the other provinces, the intent is to have fees reduced by half by the end of 2022 um, work by and in the long run moving to the $10 a day, um, which is I believe is over a five year period of time. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, Miss Daniel may have more information than, than that, but. 
I unfortunately don't um, about our province, but it was Nova Scotia, not New Brunswick, was the fifth province that oh, uh, signed. Just, yeah. Um, yeah, and speaking with um, colleagues in the industry, we've we have no news as far as Alberta's uh, agreement goes. All right. Thank you for that additional information. It, it is uh, appreciated. Councillors, if there are not further questions for Mrs. Waxer or Ms. Daniels, I would invite a motion. Councillor Kellogg-Rampey. I'd be happy to make a motion that Councillor approve the use of 24,000 from the position of for the portion of the COVID recovery reserve previously allocated to provide subsidy to users of the municipal child care service to develop a community child care strategy. And that council undertake advocacy to encourage the province of Alberta to join the national wild early, early learning and child care plan as soon as possible. Thank you, uh, Councillor Keller Grampy. Um, I heard um, the national wild early learning and child care plan. So I, I think I, I will say that you meant that it would be wide, not wild, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, <laughs> only Ms. Daniel will really know. Uh, that is the motion. Is there any debate on the motion? Councillor Butler? Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Councillor Kelleher MP for making the motion. I would like to suggest that we split the questions. Um, I will point out the reason I would like to split the question is I would like to propose an amendment on the, and the amendment applies only to the first point. I just feel it would be easier if the questions were split. I'm in favor of the motion, but would suggest first that we split the question and then I would like to propose an amendment. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler. Um, without um, taking a look at our existing procedure bylaw, I think my recollection is that uh, if any councillor requests that a question be split, it shall be split. Um, so it shall be split um, without um, without vote on that. Uh, that's just at your request and that can be easily accommodated. So the questions are, are split or I will present them as a split motion. Uh, so councillor Butler, if you wish to propose an amendment to the first part of the motion, um, I invite you to do so. Sure, thank you very much. Um, the amendment I pro propose deals um, simply with a question that uh, I asked last week, and that was as to um, having some discussion around scope and RFP on this before it is sent out for in in consultation. So I would like to propose the addition of the wording and that RFP for independent consultation consultation be presented to council for approval. So that is the amendment that I am suggesting. And as you see, it applies really only to the first point, which is why I suggested the question um, be split. Thank you. And for my benefit primarily, but possibly for the benefit of administration, although they have access to a tape, can, can you just add those additional wording? Yes. Uh, so um, that we append to the end of the first bullet and that an RFP for independent consultation be presented to council for approval. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Butler, I'll, I'll ask, uh, I, I see your hand there, Councillor Demota, but I, I want to ask uh, the, the mover, um, Councillor keller whether she would accept that as a friendly amendment. I'll accept the friendly amendment in Ireland. I don't, I don't think that it changes um, the nature of the motion. Um, it adds to it. Um, I, I'm prepared to to say that I could accept that as a, as a friendly amendment. And if, if you're so inclined, then we will take it that way. Um, Councillor Demoda. Oh, nothing, that's all I wanted to add. I, uh, I, was, I was just reminding uh, you that, that uh, it was uh, a friendly amendment to a motion that was on the table and, and we were already addressing administration and jot that down. And so I was 
going to stay shouldn't we ask the mover first, but it's all done and that's great. Thank you. Is there any further debate then on the first part of the motion, which um, has been um, severed and will be dealt with separately? Councillor DeMoto. No, I support it. And uh, I like the train of thought there. And I think that it just kind of uh, helps with the, the accountability of it all and, uh, and, and keeping council a little bit more informed in the process. And uh, I appreciate also that it's split. Uh, I want to support both. So I, I think going forward, it's, uh, I'm in favor. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you for that, uh, Councillor Butler. Thank you very much. And thank you uh, to council for accepting the amendment. I do think it is uh, only reflected of what we earlier discussed. So I appreciate that. I'm in favor of this motion. Um, I think that uh, child care in the community as has been pointed out many times is a extremely important uh, issue of concern in our community. I would point out that I'm very active in the um, affordable housing realm and we have a policy or sorry, we have a strategy there that has um, been subjected to a lot of discussion in the community. This is another example of where a community-wide um, conversation that would help us to understand what um, broadly across the board members of our community are looking for when it comes to childcare in the community. So um, I'm happy to see this coming forward. I'm looking forward to seeing an independently developed and um, strategy that considers all options, uh, that doesn't presume that what we're doing now is the way we should be doing things in the future, that is open to um, any and all considerations and suggestions from the community and that uh, as Councillor Keller MP um, queried, that involves extensive community consultation and engagement. So I'm in favor and thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler. Anything else? Uh, I will also speak in favor of the motion um, as amended by friendly amendment. Um, I, I anticipate that we may find um, when the RFP comes forward for approval that the $24,000 that's coming from the portion of the COVID recovery reserve previously allocated for subsidies might not be the number that we need. And I would welcome an opportunity to look at this again. Um, and certainly the, the first 24,000 we confirmed should come from there, but I would like to know whether $24,000 at the end of the day is the right amount to get us um, what we need to move forward with um, something that is so critical to the future of the community as, as a child care strategy. So I too am in favor of the motion. Any further debate? If not, I will call the question on the first of the recommendations as they, as they have been split. All in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. The second part of the motion then is that council undertake advocacy to encourage the province of Alberta to join the national wide early learning and childcare plan as soon as possible. Is there any debate on that motion? Hearing none, I will call the question. All those in favor? There are none opposed, that is carried. So thank you both, uh, Mrs. Waxer, Ms. Daniel. We look forward to seeing the RFP for the consultant um, to be presented at some future Committee of the Whole or Council leading to Council for its consideration. Thank you both for your, for your attendance today. Pleasure. That takes us, uh, well, where does it take us? Bylaws, uh, agenda item eight, uh, just a summary of bylaws, no bylaws for consideration, correspondence for information, consideration or action. We have 
nothing. Um, is there any new business for council? Councillor reports. Councillor Butler. Thank you. I would like actually to stay at the bylaw summary oh. item, item. And I apologize for being a little slow on this, but I'm confused by or wondering about the local improvement levy bylaw and the borrowing bylaw, which were subjected to first reading July 6. And I would say I thought we would be seeing subsequent readings coming back to council um, by this time. And I don't mean, uh, I realize that Mr. Um, Gavin is not here. I don't mean to put Mr. Greathead on the spot, but normally we, um, get on with approving bylaws fairly quickly. And I'm just wondering if Mr. Greathead, you know when we will expect to see um, those two bylaws coming back for second and third reading. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Um, yes, um, I can ask uh, Christine uh, Nadon to speak to that, um, where we are in the process. Um, I know that specifically, um, We've got a bit of a moving target, and that's uh, part of the re reason for the delay in, in that uh, coming from the uh, JCOS as we're uh, finessing that and working that one through. So, um, Ms. Nadon, do you have anything further that we could add? Yes, thank you, Mr. Greathead. Um, I was working with uh, Mrs. Malinchek and Mr. Given last week on the timelines and whether to bring uh, the bylaws forward or not, and uh, you can anticipate to see them for second and third reading on the 17th, which is the next regular meeting. And uh, part of the reason for that is the local improvement bylaw has requirements for the owners that are affected, which in this case is, is Parks Canada, because the parcels that are affected are entirely within Parks Canada's ownership. And uh, so Mr. Given is in contact with them to ensure that the local improvement plan and proposed levy, uh, there's an opportunity for affected property owners to petition bylaws and getting confirmation back from Parks Canada that they do not intend to petition is sort of the one of the items, one of the moving targets that, that we are dealing with. And uh, we were also reviewing legislation and ensuring that we were compliant with all that. So so administration is working on it and the plan is to return on the 17th for second and third reading, which means we will have to seek certification ahead of time from Parks Canada and, and things like that. So, so it's in progress, it's in development and you can expect to see it on the 17th. Both of them, see them on the 17th. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, that answer. You're welcome, thanks. Thank you both for that. Um, I will return then to agenda item 11, councillor reports. Are there any councillor reports? I see none, so thank you. I can advise that, I think it was, uh, I will go ahead, councillor Butler, I see your hand now. I'm sorry, I see, seem to be perpetually behind the eight ball this morning. Um, I would like to make a brief uh, report um, from my positions chair of Jasper Community Housing Corporation. Um, I would just like to inform, though it has been mentioned, inform the community that the JCHC is resubmitting its application to the Rapid Housing Initiative for a grant to develop affordable housing on parcel GC on Connaught Drive. It is housing, uh, it would be housing primarily directed toward um, the younger demographic, toward female-led home houses, um, sorry, female-led families, um, and with a focus on um, new arrivals in the community. This has been well discussed, but I think it is worth uh, informing that we do expect to resubmit the application for a grant in the, um, in the area of, I think, just under $10 million, though that amount may change slightly from what we 
applied for in the earlier iteration because of uh, increased cost of um, construction. We are currently obtaining support from the province uh, for our application through a letter from Alberta Seniors and Housing and are assembling other uh, collateral to strengthen our application and we do uh, believe that we have a very strong application for the second round of um, grants through the Rapid Housing Initiative. As people may know, we were not successful in the first round, but felt we had a very strong application. The program was very highly oversubscribed in the first round, and so the federal government has committed additional funding to be distributed through CMHC for this second round. Um, I'd like to say that the um, addition to our programming of the in-ground services on Connaught Drive and the previous decisions to go ahead with that are um, a major indication of support from the municipality for this uh, grant and uh, really does strengthen our proposal because in the previous iteration, um, there was a um, hope for contribution from the municipality to that end, but uh, we are very solid on that contribution now and that has strengthened our application. So I appreciate very much council's support for uh, those in-ground services. That's all I have on that, but um, I'm open to any questions if there are any. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Butler. Councillor Juneau. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Butler, thanks for your uh, information today. Just a little clarification on the 10 million. This is a $10 million interest-free or low interest loan. It's not a grant of 10 million, is it? I'm sorry. Just... Thank you for the question. Uh, in the application, um, the original application, the total build was, I believe, $13.5 million, of which $9.5 million would have been covered by the grant. And yes, it is a grant. It is not an interest-free loan. So those were the numbers in the original app application. They are subject to, um, as I said, some uh, rediscussion right now due to the increased cost of construction, which may change the specific, the specific ask. But no, it is a grant. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, opportunity for clarification, uh, Councillor Juneau. Uh, I just want to extend my my thanks um, to Councillor Butler for his diligent work on on this particular file. Um, clearly, a, a the probably highest priority for for Council is to get housing built on. It's an important file. So thank you, Councillor Butler, for your continued work on that. And just uh, to keep Council aware, and I, I should know what I don't, but I will investigate. Um, but if there is an opportunity um, in coming months, particularly at AUMA, to continue to lobby the province um, for a change in um, debt ceilings and not counting money lent to uh, something like the Jasper Community Housing Corporation or housing corporations generally to count against our municipal debt limit would be extremely critical in, in this circumstance. So if council can keep presence of mind on that every time you have an opportunity to engage with somebody from the province, um, that is a discussion worth having. Are there other um, reports from councillors? I will um, advise then that I had an opportunity last week, uh, Tuesday of last week, um, to meet uh, with Mr. David Goldstein, the new CAO for Travel Alberta, who was in town. Um, I used the opportunity to better acquaint him with our challenges, particularly with respect to um, the federal government. Um, including both the, the outstanding land rent question and the outstanding question of uh, transfer of jurisdiction for land use um, planning and development. Um, I did that in the context that Mr. Goldstein was on his way um, soon to Ottawa to meet with counterparts there, but the more information he has about uh, the impacts on our community as a tourism destination and one of the anchors of the Alberta tourism economy, the better positioned he would be. So 
that was a, I thought, a, a useful opportunity to convey our message to him. And of course, last week, um, I had an opportunity on behalf of council to speak to Senator Karen Sorensen and offer congratulations on behalf of our council and community for her new appointment. Are there any other reports to be made to council at this time? If not, we have nothing on the upcoming events list. Is anyone aware of anything other than, again, the uh, mobile vaccination bus, which is uh, in town and will be accepting walk-ups without healthcare cards um, in about 10 minutes time. If there is nothing else, then I would invite a motion to adjourn. Councillor Juneau, thank you. All those in favor? Thank you, uh, we are adjourned. Mr. Greathead, I will give you credit for efficiency to this morning. Uh, you showed up on screen and we got our work done in, in 50 short minutes. So thank you very much for that. Uh, thank you to all those members of the public who have tuned in today and we will see you all again in a week's time. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mayor, and thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I want to find out who this Zaphod person is. I know who.